Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Imperial Guard Regiments as we get into the Praetorian Guard Regiment. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day. And if you enjoy our videos, thank our patrons on Patreon. Link in the description if you want to support us. But with that said, let's get into 40 Facts on the Praetorian Guard. The Praetorian Guard is an Astra Militarum regiment that hails from the hive world of Praetoria in the Segmentum Tempestis. The vast majority of Imperial citizens on Praetoria are little more than slave laborers who toil in massive manufactorum complexes while large merchant fleets trade across the Segmentum. Praetoria, or at least its rulers, are amongst the richest in the Imperium. The planetary lords of Praetoria hold that it is only through fearsome training and draconic punishment for the most minor infringement the hive toughens its inhabitants. From this miserable population, the Praetorian Guard are raised. They are renowned for their iron discipline and bravery. They detest disorder, and even in the midst of the fiercest battle, will ensure that their ranks are correctly dressed in parade ground fashion and uniforms smartly fastened. On Praetoria, everything, even the very air they breathe, is rationed, and they can be made to follow orders and do as they are told in a military unit. Whatever one's views on the training method used, they seem to work, producing troops that are as ferocious on the attack as they are determined in defense. The Praetorian Guard regiments fight in perfectly formed firing lines, unleashing precisely timed volleys of last fire, despite the chaos of battle around them. They are known for not breaking from the line under almost any conditions, displaying a fortitude that is near superhuman when compared to other Imperial Guard regiments. The Praetorian Guard uniform is one of the most distinctive uniforms in all of the Astra Militarum which typically consists of their trademark scarlet tunic with epaulets and dark blue trousers with a vertical scarlet stripe on the outside of the leg. Most often, the Praetorian Lion, the sigil of Praetoria, is displayed somewhere on the chest. It is a red lion on a field of white. But the most notorious of all is the Praetorian Guard Pith Helmet, a lightweight cloth-covered helmet, often more clumsy and conspicuous on the battlefield, but proudly worn by the Praetorian Guard. The Praetorian Guard Regiment is most known for their valiant efforts during the massacre of Big Tooth River, a disastrous battle that occurred during the Montar campaign on the Imperial world of Montar 7. When an ancient space hulk entered the Montar system in the Segmentum Tempestus, little notice was taken until it disgorged a massive orc wall led by the mighty greenskin warlord Bulgarg that launched an assault on the desolate world of Montar 7. Claiming the planet for his own, Bulgark was determined to conquer every world within the Montar system and carve out his own orc empire. The orc landing didn't go unnoticed, and soon the planetary governor Kinwa on Montar Prime urgently requested aid from the Imperium to deal with the orcs before they spread mayhem and destruction throughout the star system. Although preliminary reports indicated that the orc tribes were of no great strength, Lord Kinwa simply did not have the force to deal with them. The total human and abhuman population of the entire Montar system numbered less than 700 individuals, and Lord Kinwa's planetary defense force consisted of an understrength platoon with only three heavy weapons and no armored vehicles. Fortunately for Lord Kinwa, this appeal for help was received and acted upon very quickly, perhaps too quickly as things turned out. The Montar system lied in the Segmentum Tempestis, close to the planet of Taloran. Imperial Guard forces in this sector were under the control of Lord Commander Sheridan, who had recently completed a successful campaign against a renegade Eldar pirate fleet. The campaign had been a long and bloody one, a running battle fought in half a dozen different star systems and on more than 30 different worlds, which all ended in the destruction of the Eldar renegades by the Imperial Navy. Reports of this final battle were coming in when Sheridan received the news of the orc invasion of Montar 7. It may have been the confidence over the victory against the renegade Eldar that clouded his judgment about how he would deal with the warlord Bulgark. Whatever the reason, Sheridan trusted the preliminary reconnaissance reports and decided to dispatch a small force to deal with the orcs as quickly as possible. The troops that he sent were the veterans of the campaign against the Dark Eldar, the 24th Praetorian Guard. The Praetorian 24th had lived up to the traditions of the fighting reputation of their homeworld, but had suffered very heavy casualties in doing so. Of the 1,500 troops that had left Praetoria, only about 300 now remained. More importantly, all of the regiment's senior officers had been killed. The most senior officer left alive and acting commander of the regiment was 21-year-old Captain Gliney 
of the Sea Company. To overcome these deficiencies against the Orcs, the 24th was hastily reinforced with the survivors of the 135th Talaran Desert Raiders, which had been all but destroyed in the battles against the Eldar Renegade. Crucially, the commander of the Talarans, Colonel Al Tarai, was put in overall command of the reinforced Praetorian 24th, even though the bulk of the troops in the regiment were Praetorians. It was a command structure that was to have disastrous consequences for the regiment. The 24th Praetorian was dispatched immediately to Montar 7, with orders from Lord Sheridan to act quickly to eliminate the orc threat to the star system. Information was still sketchy about the size and strength of the orc tribes, but the common consensus was that they were all fairly few in number, and lacking any heavy support in the form of gargants or battle fortresses. Orc Blood Axe mercenaries hired as scouts by the Imperial Guard during the campaign confirmed that although they had never actually met Warlord Bolgar, the Imperials had nothing to worry about, for Bolgar was considered a minor threat. When the Praetorian 24th made planetfall on Montar 7, Colonel Al Tarai lost no time in moving against the Orcs. Suborbital spycraft had pinpointed the Orc camp at a location on the Big Tooth River. Orc numbers were still unknown, and a smog hanging over the settlement made it impossible for Imperial spycraft to get any readings on Orc numbers. But worryingly, there were signs that the Orcs were in the process of constructing a gargant and other engines of war. The colonel was determined to act swiftly, as instructed by his orders from Lord Sheridan. He refused to take the advice of Captain Gleany, who suggested using his company's blood axes to scout the orc camp. The colonel didn't trust the blood axes, however, especially in an operation against their own kind, and in any case, his orders specifically instructed him to act with extreme prejudice, and this he was determined to do so. Less than 24 hours after arriving on the planet, the Praetorian 24th moved against the Orcs. The commander split the regiment into three columns. The first of these was Fors Castair, consisting of the Talaran Rough Riders and all of the Talaran Armored Companies. It was commanded by Captain Am Castair of Talaran. The second column, Fors Gliney, consisted of Company C of the 24th Praetorians. And finally, the third column, Fors Terai, was commanded by the colonel himself and consisted of Company A and all of the regiment's support weapons. The colonel's plan was to use Force Castair to smash into the orc camps in a devastating surprise attack. As the Imperial tanks piled into the orcs, Force Gliney, all of which were mounted in fast-moving Camaras, would sweep around the orc camp, blocking off the orcs' retreat and cutting down those greenskins that tried to escape. By the time the colonel and the rest of the regiment's lower-moving troops arrived, all that remained to be done would be to mop up. It was not a bad plan, but it relied on the orcs being too weak to fight back effectively against Force Castair. Fatally for the Imperial troops, this was not going to be the case. As the Imperial troops crossed the hill that overlooked the camp, the plan had already started to fall apart. Force Castair had pulled ahead of the rest of the regiment and started to cross Big Tooth River before Force Gliney could get into position. Captain M. Castair was a brilliant but headstrong commander who had proved his bravery, if not his common sense in many battles. In the past, when he took a gamble, his luck had always paid off, but as the Lehman Rust tank spearheaded his attack across Big Tooth River, Castair's luck finally ran out. Suddenly, from out of the orc camp, poured out dozens of snakebite boar boys, closely followed by hundreds of orc warriors and their smaller Gretchen cousins. Super heavy weapon batteries mounted in the watchtower of the orc town bursted into action and started blasting away at the surprised Imperial troops. And then, as this torrent of greenskin destruction smashed Force Castair's front, the reeling guardsmen were hit by an even heavier volume of fire from the rear. As tanks exploded and men died, the guardsmen stared in horror and disbelief as the gargant they had believed still under construction lumbered over the horizon, flanked on either side by huge battle fortresses blistering with blazing guns and supported by orc fighter bombers overhead. Within moments, Captain Castair was dead, while the panic-stricken survivors of the force that he had led did what they could to escape. Many of the Teloran Rough Riders attached to the column survived the initial bombardment, and they now tried to escape back over Big Tooth River, away from the orc settlement. Unfortunately, the steep banks on the far side of the river slowed their escape, and within moments, the pursuing snake bite boar boys of the Blood Hands tribe caught up with them. The result was a massacre. As was quickly becoming clear, the Imperial force had walked into an ambush masterminded by Warlord Bulgark, 
whose scouts had let him know about the arrival of the Imperial Guard from the moment they had landed on the planet. Bulgarg's ambush was hardly original or even well executed, but when combined with the Colonel's fatally flawed plan, it led to a disaster for the Praetorian 24th. It is estimated that within three minutes of the trap being sprung, Force Coster had suffered 85% casualties, but the disaster was not over yet, for above the river valley, Force Gliney was also under attack. From the bluff overlooking the river, Captain Gliney could do little to help his comrades below, for almost at the same moment that Castair came under attack, his company had been ambushed by a huge force of orc buggies. The orcs had appeared from nowhere, quickly surrounding the Praetorians and forcing them from their chimeras. Gliney formed the vehicles into a circle, from behind which the grim red-coated soldiers under his command prepared to sell their lives as dearly as possible. All of them knew they were doomed. After having dealt with Force Castair, the hundreds of orc boys and the huge war engines that accompanied them would turn their attention to the umis that were left on the hill. As the orcs swarmed up the hill, the Praetorians hit them with volley after volley of tightly controlled last fire, while the multi-lasers of the Chimeras cut bloody swaths through the orc ranks. Soon the slopes around the guardsmen were surrounded by hundreds of orc corpses and blazing buggies. But still the orcs kept on coming supported by withering fire from the Gargant and the battle fortresses, yelling their guttural battle cries, and with a complete disregard for their own safety that impressed even the battle-hardened warriors from the hives of Praetoria. The orc warriors hurled themselves again and again at the rapidly shrinking circle of guardsmen, until finally there were no humans left. Within an hour, every single member of Force Castair and Force Gliney, with the exception of the Blood Axe mercenaries, was completely dead. Colonel had no option but to pull back in the face of the victorious orc army. Fortunately for the troops under his command, the orcs were too busy celebrating their victory to be bothered with chasing the few beaten survivors, and they were able to escape more or less unscathed. The colonel was never to be given independent command again. He died ten years later after making a lone attack on a tyrannid dominatrix. It is said that his last words were, let me go to my fate, brothers. I must have peace from the ghosts that haunt me. Warlord Bulgark went on to found a successful orc empire in the Montar system, but then disappeared alongside most of his followers on board an orc space hulk. It is assumed that the craft was destroyed in the warp, but no one can say for certain. Lord Sheridan recovered from the setback and went on to reconquer the Montar system from the orcs that had remained after Bulgark had left. In the forefront of the campaign was the newly raised 24th Praetorian Guard. And those were 40 facts on the Praetorian Guard. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to share it with your friends. It helps out the channel when you do so. Uh, I loved reading this because it was an orc victory. I'm an orc player, so whenever I see orc victories, it just brings a smile to my face. Um, and the fact that we got to see uh, snake bite and blood axes uh, within a story uh, is pretty badass. I think those are the two clans that kind of get overlooked. Uh, you always hear about freebooters, you always hear about uh, goths and bad moons, but you don't um, hear about death skulls, snake bites, or um, blood axes. Uh, and I think blood axes are pretty cool. And, and of course, feral orcs are awesome because I love to see the kit bashing of like the different like boar boys, like get some boar boys with some guns and stuff. Uh, it's pretty badass. And then at the same time, I like this Imperial Guard Regiment. Their look is very unique. There was actually a box set um, way back in the day, not not during the time that we played. So we, we don't really have um, too much knowledge of this box set. Um, I think all the minis were still metal. Um, but it is uh, a box set of Imperial Guard uh, regiments that were supposed to look like the um, the soldiers, the British soldiers that fought in uh, South Africa, I believe. So this is an actual event that happened uh, against the Zulu nation. So the Zulu uh, nation was the one that actually ambushed the 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 British. Um, it's funny because I didn't know that this was an actual story until recently. Um, or I saw the, that story and then I read this lore. I saw that story like mm, probably like three years back uh, when I was like researching the Zulu nation for whatever reason. Um, and then I read this story and I was like, wait, this sounds familiar. And the connection was there. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, it's always fun to, to, to see like actual historical events recreated in the 40k universe uh, with different races. 
Uh, if you guys have any other suggestions for other topics of Warhammer 40k, comment down below. Any Imperial Guard regiments, any epic battles, uh, let me know. And if you enjoy our content and you want to support us, don't forget we have a Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys. With that said, thanks for everything and I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>